So my insurance company tells me that they can't fully insure my classic car like normal because it's not a restored vehicle and they're in the business of insuring restored classic vehicles. So what's a guy to do? You know, they want the carpet back in it and the door panels installed. La di da, how cosmopolitan. So because I would like full insurance on the car, we're gonna embark on a journey where we're gonna fix some of that small stuff. And what we're gonna start with is this car has spots all over it. You know, uh, somebody in the past has done a little bit of amateurish body work and they've sprayed kind of pink orange primer in the spots where they did. No big deal, but you can see them from a mile away. So what's our goal? Because am I restoring this vehicle? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I would like to buy air ride for this car and a gear vendor set up for the Firebird. I'm not sinking a bunch of time and money into a full paint job on this car right now. Maybe that's something I'll do in the future, but right now it's just not in the cards. So what's our goal? Goal is to be able to take some strategic pictures for the insurance company from 10, 15 feet away and have the car look like it's all the same color. So we're going to use this paint that I got off of eBay. Uh, this is custom matched paint to this car's original paint code. Um, it does blend fairly well, but uh, you will have to play with the primer under it a little bit because there is uh, some differences between light primer and dark primer and how your top coat's gonna look. And then over the spots where they did metal work, we're gonna use this filler that I bought from AutoZone. This kind of all came together in a hurry. If you're preparing for this, I would suggest buying a better product. Um, and you don't even have to spend a lot of money. The stuff that Summit sells is actually really good. This stuff, it works. I, I don't wanna bash it, but you can see some pinholes from when I do some close-ups on, on some of the body work that I did later. But it's fine. We're not gonna do any harm to the vehicle if I do decide to paint it later on down the line. Anything that we do here is just gonna make my life easier later. So that's the big thing. Uh, make it look like it's all one color and do no harm in case I do wanna paint it later, you know, in a more full format. <laughs> Now, setting expectations with this stuff, um, are you gonna end up with a chip foos like paint job with a rattle can? No, um, and if you expect that, you're gonna be disappointed. But I've already done some of this, uh, and what you'll find is that compared to the crazy bright poppy spots that I had earlier where you know it looks like the car got chicken pox and mom put calamine lotion all over it, uh, you're, those are gonna go away. So from a distance going 20 miles an hour down the street or you're standing 20 feet away, especially if you're not in direct, direct sunlight, it's gonna look pretty good. And then we're gonna have my buddy who has a detailing company come in, and maybe do a little bit of minor paint correction and try to make the old paint pop a little harder, which is then gonna get closer to matching this, which shows up darker because the old paint's faded. I, I think with, when that happens, it's really gonna be difficult to tell where I did this unless you're standing right on top of the car. And that's the goal, again, when I'm taking pictures for both the insurance company and just driving around, because it is gonna look better. You know, we'll do a walk around, show you what we're gonna do, talk about the general plan, and then we'll dive right in and start working at a spot that I picked out on the door. So we'll kind of start with a little bit more of a close up of the hood. Um, some of this stuff like here, you know, I mean, that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm not the biggest patina guy, I sort of think some cars look great with it, especially like those teal cars, like teal from the 50s looks great. Um, but I'm also not big on just like clear coating over rust. So um, if it's not rusted, you know, I do think you can take and rub that out, rub it smooth, and then maybe put some of that shine juice over it. And I do think that'll look really good. But for a lot of this stuff, you know, I'm not just going to leave that. Like this stuff here, we're going to use filler, you know, on some of those places where there's pinholes, I might get the MIG welder out and try to zap some more metal into there and then grind it flat and then maybe put a little bit of filler over it. You know, same thing with like here. I mean, that's that's coarse. We're definitely gonna sand that down. The trim on this is really good, but when they painted the roof at some point, they put uh, masking tape over it and then didn't take it off. So that masking tape is probably like 10 years old. It has paint on the top. 
and it is miserable to get off. I mean, you can see over here where I fought and got, you know, pieces of it off, but it's a task. Like every time I come out here to do it, I spend like 15 minutes on it, get tired of it and just kind of do one spot. So I've just been doing that over time, but guys don't do this. Don't, don't leave masking tape on there because you're just making yourself or somebody else a huge hassle down the line. You know, once you're done painting, take that stuff off. Uh, to the roof, you know, I mentioned somebody painted this and this was originally a two-tone car, so this is correct. It should have a white roof. Um, but this is like house paint with a brush or, you know, what kind of paint it is, I don't know, but it was definitely brushed on. I mean, you can clearly see the brush strokes there. So that is gonna be one of the larger undertakings. That'll be an episode in and of itself is I'm going to take this off and paint the roof. Um, again, this bumper is trash. Somebody had a really bad hitch to some through it at some point in its life. The other bumper is a lot better. Um, this tailgate on the hole is really not that good. Um, especially like here, I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but this is not flat. Like if I were to lay a flat edge across that, this has been hit here at some point. And I actually tracked down the window crank for this, which was hard to find. And um, it won't sit in there right now because this is crooked. So we're gonna have to pull this out. Um, I do have the other tailgate off the other car, which is better, but I really don't know if I wanna do that. I, I, I think this is probably savable as is. Um, I've never used it before, but I'm probably gonna go buy one of those stud pullers that like the little weld on thing and you put a puller on it and yank it out. I'm probably gonna try that. Um, I've been looking for an excuse to buy one of those and try it anyway. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys this. I love this. This is just like backyard ingenuity at its finest. Um, this quarter was clearly ate up. So homie took a flat piece of metal and bent it around. So if you come around here, like you can see, I mean, that's not normal. That's not supposed to be there like that, but I I still dig it. I'm here for it. So we'll zap that off with a cutoff wheel. Same thing here mirror with a flap disc and make it flat. Probably pull this out a little bit. This is one place that we might have to get the hammer and stuff out because like if I were to just fill that, that is definitely more than an eighth of an inch. You know, we don't want to do anything that crazy. So we might have to do a little bit of cutting and welding there. But uh, that, that's one of the worst spots on the car. For the most part, we're just going to be able to kind of get the grinder out, get the sander out, make it flat, put a small skim coat on, and it's going to be fine. And some of this stuff, like there are some bigger dings like back here. I, I don't even know if I care about that, honestly. Um, you know, I mean, I, like, I could just lay filler in there. I'm probably not gonna do that um, because again, I don't want to be the guy who's got three eighths inch of filler on it. So some of that stuff I'm probably just gonna live with. We're gonna fix stuff like this to where the trim doesn't line up. The door, This door probably needs to come up a little bit. So we'll do some stuff like this. The one on the other side definitely needs to come up. This is another spot. They hit, uh, you can see there's a hole peeking out there. There's a big hole here and this is pretty banged in. Uh, and they tried to cover it up with the mirror, which sort of works, but we'll take this mirror off. We'll use that stud puller that I'm talking about buying and probably try to pop this out. And we might even, depending on how big this hole is, when I pull this off, we might put some more metal in right there before we reinstall the mirror. Uh, little stuff, guys, like this. They've got all the, tr uh, the badges off. You'd be amazed at how much, just like straightening out this bumper, even if I didn't have one to replace it with, and putting the badges back on, how much that makes a difference. I mean, that's gonna be the biggest thing, guys, is just getting these spots gone, and then little things like that, like putting badges on, getting the bumper straight, it's gonna make this car look like a totally different car. Uh, real quick, I wanna make two notes here on the products. So number one, with the uh, filler, I am in no way, shape, or form advocating going nuts with the filler. You know, use it how you're supposed to use it. And we've all seen horror stories of guys who have, you know, a half inch of Bondo on the car and then it gets peeled off and it's terrifying. Nobody wants to do that. I'm not doing that. If anything, I'm gonna live with high spots. You fill it a little bit and then you deal with the spots that are high. Uh, I'm not looking to do a perfect job here, just a better job, like improvement, go from three to a six. Um, and then with the spray paint, as I said earlier, this actually matches pretty good. I bought two cans of this because I originally did the wheels in the body color. That can was flawless. This can, you see that a little bit, this can leaks and I had trouble with it trying to drip on the panels. So if you have air rather than spray cans, especially if you're doing larger spots, I would suggest buying, um, 
the same thing, get your paint coat matched into a single stage that you can use with a paint gun. All right, let's get started. So this is gonna be my chosen starting point. Um, I wanted to pick something that was a little out of the way. Uh, you know, if I would have done the big spot on the hood and then we don't get our match right, I don't want it to be something that's highly visible. So we're gonna start with this little spot down here on the door because this is one of the places where the guy did a better job. Um, there's not a whole lot of pinholes or anything that I feel like I would need to weld up, maybe maybe right there one. And we are gonna knock some of this down with a flap disc. So if I get in there and find a bunch of pinholes, maybe we get the MIG out. But I could almost hit this with a hammer to knock this weld down slightly and uh, just skim over that is right now and I think it'll work. Like that's that's not deep at all right there. You know, 16th of an inch or something like that. Hit this little bit here and then we'll rinse it off and see what it looks like because I do kind of think when they sprayed this over they went a little nuts they sprayed a lot bigger spots than they needed to spray you know and ended up making it look worse rather than better all right let's see what she reveals Oh yeah, look how much of that we took off from where it was before. I mean, this was all the way like out here. But you can see where they got down to bare metal there. So, yeah, up here, like I don't know why they sprayed all that up here. I mean, you do have uh, down to, that doesn't look like metal to me. That looks like more, a different color of primer maybe. But I wouldn't have sprayed all the way up there. Like that looks cool. I'm good with that. We will probably end up covering some of it up anyway, just by virtue of doing this. But I would be totally happy with that. It's just all this color that I don't want. If we went from this to the black, great. I just don't want this paint. Okay, so big difference. We've uncovered a lot of the original paint here, down to the original primer in a few places. But now we can focus on this. So I'm going to start with the flap disc and just knock down these, these welds where they're uh, not flat. Um, then we'll probably, depending on how that looks, I might get the MIG welder out. Um, but yeah, we'll knock this flat and then go back over it with either the MIG welder and some filler or just the filler, depending on how lazy I feel. Okay, so we've been in here with our flap disc and sanded this pretty flat. I think I'm just going to live with these small pinholes here and just I'm going to prime over them to get a little bit of paint down in them you know to prevent any possible corrosion and then we're just going to fill over the spot now the one thing I did do that I didn't talk about is I took my body hammer and just around the weld to knock it down a little bit um, so then hopefully we don't hit any high spots when we're sanding this flat with filler here hopefully you know, this weld now is well lower than what the door panel should be. The only place I'm kind of concerned about it is over here because it's on the edge. You, you just don't have a lot of room to knock it down. We've got this piece of cardboard up here. So when I spray some primer over this uh, before we put filler on, you know, we're not spraying all over the wheels and stuff. But that's our next step. So we've got a coating of primer on there. Got to wait for that to dry before we put some filler on. I figure I could use this time to talk about why this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. Um, and why you're probably not going to get it right exactly the first time, which is why I started with a spot that's low on the car. Um, so if it's not as close as I want it to be with the paint match, you know, we can try again with a different color primer. Now to show that, here's a piece of scrap metal that I had. Now the, the metal was essentially black on the one side, and then I put a piece of masking tape over it, sprayed some common just kind of gray primer that you see all over the place, and then sprayed that same top coat over it. And you can see that results in a dramatic difference. So your primer color can have a really notable difference on what your top coat comes out looking like. Um, that primer that's on there now is already a little more orangey than this pink stuff that's been on the car that we kind of showed actually comes out pretty decently. So 
we'll just have to see what that looks like. It might come out a little too dark. It might come out better. Uh, we'll see. This is second pass. So first pass, um, did a pretty good job, but there was a couple of high spots still where that weld was. So once I uncovered those, I hit those with the flap disc a little bit more to try to knock them down a little bit more. And then whatever comes out here, you know, I'm probably just gonna live with. And, you know, cause even, even the way it was before, it was already way better. So I think it'll be pretty good with the second pass. For better or worse, I think this is what we're gonna roll with. I mean, clearly there's a little bit of a high spot right there. Um, but it's really difficult to feel. So like I said, I think we're gonna call that good enough and it's gonna look way better than stuff like this. You know, we'll address that later. Here's our spot with primer on it. Uh, I'm gonna put one more coat on it because this stuff's supposed to be buildable. So I'm gonna try to build it up so I can sand it down. Now from back here, and we're only about, you know, three feet away, that already looks dramatically improved. Um, now, if we get all the way up on it, uh, there is that spot that I was worried about close to the door where I said I didn't think I was gonna be able to knock it down enough. It, it is still a little higher than I'd like it to be and it'll probably show up a little bit when we put the glossy paint on there. I should have paid a little bit more attention to that body line. All the way out by the door, it, it moves down a little bit instead of staying flat. But again, 20 miles an hour, nobody's gonna notice that. I, you know, and I can't stress this enough, that's the whole point. When it looked terrible, you're gonna be able to make it look better. A little bit later in the day, different clothes, uh, took the fiance to see the nun too. It's all right. Um, I was just gonna come out and blast some paint on this real quick. Uh, I just put some 600 grain sandpaper on my block and was wet sanding the primer that I already put on. And uh, up here where I hadn't really done any work, when I was wet sanding that, we went through to this other layer here actually looks kind of cool that's actually what i would call patina if i were gonna coat over something and leave it that's fine but uh because we've already done all this work down here we are going to try to blend this so this sets me back a little bit i'm going to throw some primer over this probably do the same thing we just did but lighter so we don't burn through it again um and then we'll put the top coat on over all that see how it looks at the end of it if anybody wants to know where I got it, this stuff is from a company called Paint My Ride. I got it on eBay, and you can see their paint formula here. So you might even be able to take this formula to a local paint shop if you have one and have them mix your single stage for you. So it's been a few days here. Uh, I've let the paint dry. I had to put several coats on it. Um, and you can probably tell that it is darker here, you know, but the line is actually pretty soft. On the whole, that looks pretty good. It looks a heck of a lot better than it does before. And when you look over at spots like this, this is gonna be way more visible than this that we fixed. So all in all, I'd say this is success. All right, let's get in a little bit closer here. Um, and it's not perfect, especially if I parked it like directly in sunlight, you'll be able to see a little bit more. And there's actually a spot here where I burned through and I left it in just cause I wanted to see what would happen. And it's funny, because the lighter paint where I burn, or the lighter primer where I burn through the red primer actually shows darker, which is kind of wild, but it did work out that way. But again, you know, I think I've proven my point here that with, you know, some cheap filler from AutoZone and some paint match spray can that I got on eBay, we took that, you know, that weird pink orange spot and we made it more or less body color. And just, you know, 10 feet away, it's hard to tell other than to say like, hey, that spot looks a little darker. And again, if we were even further away or if I'm driving down the road at, you know, highway speed, you're just gonna look at that and go, oh, that's pretty much all the same color. So what we'll probably do is get a, you know, a couple of quarts or a gallon of that paint mixed up in a single stage. And then I'll use that in my Eastwood spray gun rather than doing it all with spray paint. But you don't have to, if you don't have air tools, not a big deal. You can do this with spray paint. That's why I did that. That's why I didn't immediately go to the gun because I wanted to show you that you don't have to have that stuff to, to make real progress on your hot rod. That's going to do it for this episode. Uh, this one got a little bit longer than I intended because, you know, we did a walk around and talked about the plan and all that. For the rest of the series, we're going to try to keep them a little shorter, a little more concise to the point. Uh, hopefully you'll learn something. If not, maybe you can call me an idiot and that's fine because I might learn something. So, Stick around. I uh, can't wait to dig more into these. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.